get to the equator. This is a this is a tropical plant. It's a C4 plant. Wheat is a C3 plant. It photosynthesizes differently. So wheat stops photosynthesizing at 25 degrees Celsius. The leaf starts to smoke, and it can't take CO2 in. But if I have more zinc on the edge of the leaf, it'll probably photosynthesize to 30 degrees Celsius. Because on the edge of the leaf, there's a carbonic and hydrous enzyme that uses zinc. And that's why this plant gets a zinc deficiency when you put phosphorus on. Because when you put phosphorus in the furrow, the plant says, I've got enough phosphorus, don't feed any fungus. And so the fungus is not there, the mycorrhizal fungi. I've tested it in Australia, I've tested it here. There's no fungus, and that's why your soil is compacting, it's not a sponge anymore. So the fungus is designed to find especially phosphorus and calcium. So calcium and phosphorus are, are a magnet stuck together. The only thing that releases it is CO2. So that fungus takes sugar and gives off CO2, because CO2 and hydrogen, and that stores some of that energy that the, the fungus use the energy and give off the respiration of the CO2 down deep in your soil to find phosphorus on the rock, in the clay, it's there, it's in the environment. So the, the, um, the biggest thing with corn is guaranteed zinc deficiency because you've used phosphorus and copper on wheat. And that's why you have those deficiencies. That's what this Marshner book says. So I'm looking for the cause, and when you look for the cause, you fix the problem. And the problem is, is that the day is seeded, that plant made a different choice. It decided to use the phosphorus you placed there, and the nitrogen you placed there. So nitrogen stops the nitrogen fixation of corn, stops the nitrogen fixation of peas. I treat wheat and corn like legumes, and they do get enough nitrogen. Okay. So the, the emissions being placed into the soil, in, in Australia, they have a half a percent organic matter, or in Africa, different situation than here, I have 10% organic matter. So I can't get my organic matter to burn, because the organic matter, every 1% has a thousand pounds of nitrogen in it. So if I get sunlight energy or sugar going in there, and I get fungus and bacteria chewing and grinding, and using that organic matter, it'll find the phosphorus and the nitrogen and all the minerals that are tied up there. So on this refrigerator, it's been frozen the soil, and I'm placing seed in the soil, but I'm taking the compost of the engine, the engine's a composter, it's releasing the energy of the fuel. I can burn vegetable oil or biodiesel fuel, whatever, um, diesel fuel could be propane, whatever, but we've studied that in the Montana State University, and we'll give everyone a book so that you can see what we've studied. When I place the composted organic matter into the dirt, they think it's a hot day in Africa, and the organic matter is really respirating, okay? Because I have a respirating engine there. This is a ball of fire going across the field. And I'm putting the smoke into the furrow so that the microorganisms feed on it. They cannot feed on a chunk of iron or a chunk of copper or zinc. It has to be oxidized. That's why you don't want compacted soil. That's why compacted soil is not fertile. So it's an ongoing Rubik's Cube of things affecting each other. You have these deficiencies because you use too much of another thing. And it's very difficult to figure out. It's like pushing a rope. So I have gone just to the emissions. That's all we use. And I do add things to the fuel to do experimenting. And that's, that's where we're down to. We've done the science. Uh, we yield similar to fertilizer, sometimes more, sometimes less. But it's all to do with how much rainfall fell. That's what it's based on.